cool, I guess, how satisfying is it when you have a guy come in and makes a play like that right out of, right out of the gate? Yeah, I thought he played great. You know, came in there and gave us some energy and did a really good job uh, of going in there, whether it was playing on the punt team or kickoff or punt return. Obviously, he got the big play, um, you know, that really kind of sparked us in the start of the second half, which was great. Uh, so, yeah, overall, real excited, you know, to have him on our team and to play well. And, you know, now we're just going to try to build off what he did last week. To take on more significance in, in general in the league with the colder weather coming in yeah that? definitely I mean you know it's just that part of the time in the year or two where kickers aren't as strong as they were at the beginning and so the kickoffs aren't going as as far and uh, you know it's going to be a big part the rest of the season so we got to continue to practice and, and work on getting better which I feel like we have been um, I think Marcus has done a real good job back there we got to continue to do a better job blocking for him and uh, but I think, yeah, going forward, it's, it's going to be a major part um, of the season. At what temperature does the ball really start to change and maybe become harder, I guess, we've heard? Uh, well, I don't know the exact temperature, but I know, you know, when it does get colder, it gets a little bit harder for our guys to hit the ball, especially our kickers and punters. Um, you know, so we'll have to deal with that as far as, you know, Brett and Randy when they kick the ball. But, uh, you know, for me to say the exact uh, – you know, temperature, I, I really don't know. I know when it gets, you know, colder that the ball is a little bit harder for them to hit, and they'll want to complain about it a little bit that the ball is a little bit harder, but they'll go out and do their job. They'll be fine. And as far as Chester and the, I guess as a punt returner, how, how have you kind of seen him improve uh, here in recent weeks? Yeah, I think one of the best things that uh, Chet does is when he catches the ball, he's he's been able to make the first guy miss. Um, and that's one of the job requirements that we tell a punt returner and a kickoff returner that they're – you know, their main job is to catch the ball. And then their second one is to make at least one guy miss. And uh, we feel like he's done that throughout the season, and he'll continue to, to work on that and practice. Um, we do some drills with him with our coaches and other players that go down there and get in front of him. And he catches the ball and makes a miss. Uh, you know, so we're, we're happy that he's doing a good job, but we feel like we're also leaving some stuff out there, whether it's a, a missed cut, whether it's a block. Um, you know, of just staying on a guy because, uh, you know, Chet can make things happen back there for us. So we're going to continue to work on that aspect, too. And hopefully we can get Chet out for even a bigger, bigger game because he's doing a good job averaging a first down for us. But we feel like we can get more. How critical was that there was one time where he kind of ran up and, and fielded it instead of, you know, yelling Peter for yeah. everybody to get away. How critical are like those type of uh found yards that you gain from a play like that. Yeah, it's, it's big in hidden yardage. Uh, we, we harp on that all the time. Coach Vrabel, myself, Matt Edwards. Uh, it, it's a big thing because when you usually let a punt drop and hit the ground, it's going to roll for 15 yards and maybe more. Um, and when you're talking about field position and how key that is, um, I mean, it's big. So Chet's been doing a really good job of, one, communicating that it is a short punt and then our guys can get away from it. And then the second one is him just going up and catching it and not giving the opponent 15 extra yards. He's been a pro bowler in his career. I mean, we, had, we haven't seen the big mistakes from him, which I guess is the biggest thing. But, how, I mean, has he been a, at a pro bowl level this year for you? Yeah, Maybe. knock on wood on that. But, yeah, he, he's doing a great job. You know, we knew when uh, we end up signing Morgan that we were getting a guy that has been to the pro bowls, a professional, uh, takes his job very seriously. Uh, and, he, and he has a really calm sense to him when he's out at practice and during the game. Like, it doesn't really phase him, you know, what the situation is. Is He's got the same demeanor, whether it's the beginning of the game or at the end of the game where it gets real tight. Uh, he just goes out there and does his job. And it obviously makes Brett's job easier and even Randy's job. Uh, just seeing stuff from around the league and kickers going through, you know, some some issues or punters going through some issues. It's always good to have a guy um, like that that can go out and handle his business uh, and do it well. Coach, you mentioned your son before playing youth football. And I was just curious, apparently with youth football, there's no set standard or regulation for helmets. Yeah. 
How important is it to change that, and how important is, is that helmet safety overall, especially with youth football? Ah, that's a great question. Uh, that's, that's interesting because um, I have an older son, too, who's in eighth grade, um, you know, just going into the middle school program and things like that and the youth program is one of the first things that I do is I always check out the helmet uh, that they get, whether it's certified, things like that, because our, our equipment guys are – they're awesome, whether it's Hoss, Joey, Matt Thompson, John. I mean, those guys just do such a great job with our players that I will go and ask them questions on certain helmets that I want my kids uh, to have. And, um, you know, I, I think it is uh, really key for the kids to understand what's out there as far as helmets are concerned, um, whether it's the school systems or parents in general, they, they have to know what type of helmets they're putting on their kids. So uh, that was one of the things that I did is I talked to our equipment guys and tried to get the best helmet that I could. Uh, it's kind of funny um, when I was coaching in college or just started off in coaching, uh, I worked at a place that um, kind of redid helmets and uh, know the process that goes through um, how to certify a helmet and see if it's legal or not. Uh, so that that was pretty key that I got that knowledge working for two years. Um, man, I'm forgetting that place. It was called the Varsity Sports or something like there in Oxford, Ohio, and they did a great job with helmets. Um, so, yeah, it, it is really key for youth to understand what type of helmets they're putting on their kids. It's a great. For the Texans um, special teams, mm -hmm. and I know Cameron Johnston has been with the Eagles now with the Texans doing a great job with the punt game over there. Just a little bit about maybe that. Yeah, how they're doing a great job. Yeah, he's he's doing a really uh, really good job, and he's effective. Um, he uses a bunch of different punts, whether it's a traditional punt, whether it's a hook. Uh, whether it's his plus 50, he does a really good job. He's got an extremely strong leg, uh, and he uses, obviously, that to his advantage. Um, but, uh, you know, they, their gunners have also made great plays for him where he gets it down there, and, you know, some of them might have great hang time, some of them might not. But, uh, you know, I know 24 Smith and 33 Moore do a great job of going down there and making plays in space for him. So we've got to do a great job on our punt return unit, um, whether it's blocking the gunners, catching the ball, getting – vertical, um, you know, that, that is a, a good spot for them. It's a bright spot because they're playing well on special teams. So we'll have our work cut out for us.